Hello and welcome to Tips and Tricks for Recording and Live Streaming Concerts and Events. I'm Marty Crawl, and I'll be teaching you in this video how to utilize uh, different mics to record your videos, how different audio inputs can change your recording quality, the different pros and cons of recording separate audio from your video, if an expensive camera is actually worth the price versus using your phone, how to edit together video and audio in post-production if you've recorded them separately, and how to upload and live stream to YouTube. It's important to note that I've recorded this particular clinic using several different types of video and audio techniques, and as you go through the, the video, be sure to know which ones you like the best. For video, some things were recorded on a standard iPhone, um, in this case it was a 13, it wasn't the one with the fancy camera on it. And I also used a rather expensive Canon XA40 for some of the video. And the things you see on the screen or me recorded directly to this clinic were done on a MacBook Pro, just using the built-in camera and some screen capture apps. When it comes to audio, some things were recorded on a Rode Wireless Go microphone system, as well as the onboard camera mics, whether that be on the iPhone or the XA40. We also used direct audio, which would be a microphone plugged into a soundboard and then plugged into the camera, or sometimes a microphone plugged directly into the camera. Finally, we also used uh, the built-in microphone on a MacBook Pro for some of the tutorials through the apps. If you end up with any questions or concerns or confusion at the end of this clinic, you'll find my contact information as well as a link to my YouTube page where you'll see other tutorials. Thanks for watching. Hello, uh, my name is Marty Crawl. I'm the music department chair here at Ashland High School, and we're filming from our smaller auditorium here at Ashland High School we call the Little Theater. And we're gonna talk today about different ways to live stream a concert or simply record a concert for viewing later. Uh, maybe there'll be some tips or tricks uh, during this clinic that'll help you come up with better recordings or at least archive things so you have them for the future. Let's get started. When it comes to recording band concerts or choir concerts, orchestra concerts, anything like that, audio is the key. Deep down, the video is just supplemental to the audio. Parents love to see their students on stage, um, and, and we love to, to prove that was us at that moment in that time, but really, without good audio, what's the point? So right now, you're hearing me um, through this camera, and the camera is zoomed in a bit. It's about 60 feet away, um, and I'm wearing what we call a lavalier mic, and we'll talk a bit more about this later. So that's one way to hear what you're doing. You could have somebody mic'd or something mic'd. Okay, now you're hearing me through the main speakers in the auditorium, but that's being picked up through the microphone as on the camera. So the microphone is in the back of the house, right in the center, picking up what's coming off the main speakers. Now, if you're recording lots of things that are mic'd, this may sound good to you. If the whole room is mic'd, you may like this sound. Um, if one person's mic'd and the rest of the room is live, you may not like the way it balances. That's really gonna depend on your microphone that you're recording with. And we'll talk about some options in a moment, but I wanted you to hear the difference in the space. The first one was a lavalier. Now this is with a mic going through the house system and the microphone and back on the camera hearing that. Now we've just got me talking really loud, no microphone, no amplification, and the microphone attached to the camera is recording what it's hearing in the space. So right now we set up three different scenarios. We've got live sound right now, we've got amplified sound going to the microphone, and we had direct sound coming from a lavalier mic into the camera. We still have one more way to try. So we now have one more way of doing it, and right now, this microphone plugged into the house system, but instead of having the microphone live on the camera, I've run a cable from the soundboard to the camera. So it's actually getting 
the amplified sound from this microphone direct into the camera, much the way the clip-on mic worked earlier, except we're not going wireless. We've got a couple cables run to make that happen. So now you've heard three distinct ways of doing it. So this scenario, if this looks a little bit different or sounds different, it's because I've got my iPhone running the audio and video right now. So some of us are gonna say, I, I don't have the budget or the technology or the know-how to use a camera. Well, you've all got one built in your phone. So this is a standard iPhone uh, 13, I think. It's not the one with the fancy extra camera. It's just the standard iPhone. It's about 60 feet away. I've zoomed in a little bit. And what you're hearing right now is the sound coming from the main speakers directly to the iPhone. Nothing's plugged in, nothing's added. And what you're hearing now is me talking live with no amplification directly into that same iPhone that's about 60 feet away, right at the center of the house. Uh, so you can hear the audio differences and really decide for yourself what makes sense for hearing people talking. But now we need to go to what's it gonna sound like to hear actual songs on the stage, actual sound. I don't have a choir or band lined up, but I'm gonna play you some music and see if you can hear the difference. And you really just, I want you to compare the way these things sound, which will be definitely different uh, based on how we're recording it. Okay, I have a speaker going right on the front of the stage. And what you're hearing is live camera audio coming in through the camera's built-in microphone. Now, I don't know if you're hearing a difference here. This version is also live through the camera's microphone, but we have the microphone on in the house, so that's picking up a little bit and sending a little bit of presence through the main speakers, although it might be pretty negligible. And this version is going strictly through the house microphone, through the soundboard, and directly through a cable into the camera. Okay, well we're at a, a typical soundboard, and I apologize in advance, I was not built to hold things steady, so hopefully this camera doesn't freak you out too much. But there were a lot of dials on a soundboard, and a lot of the, hopefully you have a sound guy that knows what he's doing, and can adjust this accordingly. So what I did was I ran the microphone into one of the channels, and turned that up to the volume I needed. And then here's our mains over here. So yeah, that gives me the, the sound in the house, the speakers, and it sounds great. But one of my scenarios had that microphone going directly into the camera. So the way I did that was I plugged an additional cable into one of these aux sends right here. So this would be very similar to like a monitor mix if you're used to having that. And you can also plug it into um, a record send. Um, there's lots of ways that other boards work. This particular one, I plugged it into aux one right here, and then that came out and I plugged that cable across and into my camera. So what that allowed me to do was have a separate volume for the house, which was right here. I could move this up and down and a separate volume for what I was sending to the camera. Now, that particular microphone won't necessarily pick up your entire group on stage. Um, that's great for if you're doing an assembly and somebody's a guest speaker and they're talking a lot. So you can have direct audio from them. And you can do that wirelessly too by plugging in your wireless mic into a soundboard as well or directly into a camera like I did with my lavalier mic. And that's what I'm using right now to talk with is a wireless mic plugged directly into the camera. We'll show you how to do that in just a second. If you have a lot of live sound though, you wanna hear the room. You wanna hear what's going on in the space. It's probably balanced for the, the middle or the near back of the house. And what some of you might wanna do is put a couple extra microphones 
halfway back, where you're gonna actually be listening for the best sound. Now, that might not be doable. You certainly don't wanna put that next to somebody who likes to clap and talk a lot and rustle papers. You're gonna hear that. But you could run a couple mics there, put them up pretty high. Some people put them directly in front of the stage and then run those into the soundboard and have additional lines. You could add as many as your soundboard allows. And then if up here, wherever you had it sent, like in this case, I use the aux, um, each one of those microphones could be adjusted independently to send to your camera with one feed so you could get a good balance. So uh, in that scenario, I would definitely hope your group did some kind of warm up that you could listen to on headphones and make sure it sounded good for everybody. So here we are in our larger auditorium. This is Archer Auditorium. It seats about a thousand. We actually just hang mics from one of the catwalks and leave them there permanently. This works great for bands certain orchestra and choral events, but if you're using a lot of reinforced audio through microphones and speakers, it's not the best choice. We'll put some on stage um, or make a mix through some of the microphones and some of the other things. But what you're seeing is two views here. The first one is with our Canon XA40, and the second view is through just a standard iPhone. And I hope you're noticing video-wise, um, here it switches to the iPhone, there's, there's differences, but it's not huge. If you are recording your audio separately, I suggest you just use a simple uh, phone or tablet. That's with the Canon again. And the next clip will be with the iPhone again, because those uh, cameras can get really expensive. The one I'm using right there is about 1500 bucks. And this iPhone, obviously I just had in my pocket. Okay, so we're here in the control room and this is where I like to edit things. And I just wanna show you one way that you can take your recording and, and use it as a live stream. Now this, for most people, is gonna take a little extra equipment. And that is, of course, unless you just wanna go direct from your phone, but then that compromises the audio we talked about. So if you wanna go live, you need to get yourself a switcher. So here's the switcher we use for live streaming and for mixing audio um, live for recordings. And this is called an ATEM Mini Pro. Now this little doodad is gonna cost you about $500. But if you wanna shell out the money for that, I'll show you how to do this in a second. You're gonna plug in to the HDMI jack that most cameras have, and they'll plug in the back. You can see that. And then there's also a USB cord that connects it to a computer where I can do a whole lot of editing. And this computer is showing the different cameras, but if I go down here, this is the part that's most important to me, audio. So I can, if I'm taking audio directly from a camera, I can select my camera, I can adjust the gain left and right, I can adjust the volume left and right. I can even, if I've got two mics, I can pan one left and pan one right and get a wider sound. The A10 Mini also has two separate microphone inputs, which are great because if I just wanna plug a mic directly in there that's picking up the room, I can do that as well and put that all into my recording. From there, I can make a live stream recording, plugging through, there's a couple ways. I can go live direct from the A10 Mini. You'll see there's a button up in the top right that says on air. And I can also, if this is plugged into my computer, my computer would recognize it as its own camera, no matter what I'm doing on the A10 Mini with audio or video. And then I can go straight out through my PC. And what we typically use for that is a piece of free software called OBS, but there are plenty out there. We just need some way to talk to YouTube. So let's talk about, let's talk about various uh, sources of audio because if you're recording a concert, you want the best audio possible. So what we've been talking about is this one clip on Lavalier. I like the Rode products, R-O-D-E. This little receiver is what's transmitting from this microphone to that camera that I'm recording in. But this same little receiver has its own built-in microphone. So you don't need this. You could literally just hold this and talk into it or clip this next to your collar or put it near somebody that you want to record or a soloist for that matter. If you don't have a way of connecting to the audio for whatever reason, you can always get this little handy mic holder as well. You just clip it in and now 
if you have a handheld mic for interviews or just to add to the podium next to a second mic because this one would go directly into the camera. So that's the Rode um, family of mics. Check them out. A lot of people uh, listening are probably familiar with the Zoom line of recorders. Um, very popular, especially at contests. I've got two different versions here. This is the H1N and this is the H4N Pro. Both of them do a great job. What I really like about these is on the back of each of them, you can screw them straight into a tripod and you can get them as tall as your tripod allows and record. So these we're gonna record straight to, especially this one, this is probably the most popular one. This one you can record straight to an SD card and from there you might have the best audio in the room. We've got the dual mics recording. You get that posted and you're great. What's great about this as well is that you can input two mics and just use this as a recorder. So if you have two amazing microphones in your space, you can have those where they need to be, run your microphone cable all the way to wherever you need this, and then record directly from there. One other thing that's great is there is a line out, and that's your standard uh, 3.5 uh, jack. You can plug that directly into your camera or your, another device. So I recommend these two, but what you're doing there is you're recording your audio separately, and I'll show you how to connect those later on in the clinic. Last thing I kind of like, it's the same idea. This is just a simple microphone. This is also by Rode. This is an NT4. What they've come up with is a great way to have two mics cross each other, and they have a special plug in the back, and it'll come with a cable that actually splits it, so you can have a left and right, or a one and two, however you want to do that. It gives you the same sort of extra input as this, except it's all built in in one microphone, but obviously this needs to go straight into your board. Finally, if you're recording direct with a handheld microphone, a standard microphone plugged in with an XLR cable, most cameras come with a standard jack to plug in for uh, microphones. In this case, I just got an adapter, XLR, boom, now my mic can be plugged directly in. Some cameras actually do have the XLR input as an add-on or a mini XLR as standard um, on their cameras. It just depends on what you get. So that's one more option if you want to plug in direct or use these two ideas when plugging direct from a board into your camera. Okay, I'm recording through my iPhone again because I wanted to have a picture of what I recorded all the other stuff through. And this is um, a Canon XA40. There are plenty of brands and print, plenty of styles out there, but here's what you want to look for. You want to look, if you're going to buy a camera, you want to look for one that has a couple of these, and these are pretty standard. If I open this box here, we have right here a headphone jack. This right here says mic, and that's where I plugged in our lavalier mics, our um, standard microphones. This is where I could plug in stuff from the board as well. HDMI out. That's a mini out, so you'd have to get an adapter, which isn't a huge big deal. And that HDMI out can go to one of those mixers like that ATEM mini we talked about. They've got a couple other bells and whistles. One's a remote, and what that actually means is if you want to connect it to something like this, where you don't have to have your hands all the way up on the camera to make it wide and tight and to start recording. On this side, this right here is to plug in power for the battery um, or to, to run it if you don't have a charge. And then if I swing over here, you'll see this particular camera has two spots for SD cards. So what's nice about this is it'll actually record until one's full and then start immediately recording on the other. So you can have a really long video or record in a very high definition if you want to. What's also interesting about this particular camera is this add-on microphone clamp. So you can see this screws in additionally and connects to the camera with some dials here that will affect the microphones that are plugged into it. So what's nice about this add-on, and it's not necessary for what we're doing, but it makes it very convenient, has XLR inputs. So you can input um, two microphones or you could do one as a mono instead of doing stereo and then when you listen through your headphone jack on this camera, you can hear, is there too much of one mic, too much of the other? And then come on this side and adjust microphone one, microphone two, and add or lower how much volume, how much gain. It's even got a spot here for 
uh, phantom power if necessary for the microphones you're using. All right, so if you think back to older movies you've seen or behind the scenes clips or movies about filming things, you'll see they have that old school clapboard that introduced the scene and that sort of thing. That actually serves a purpose. When you're recording audio separately, you wanna be able to sync it to the video. So the best way to do that is to have somebody on camera create some kind of sound that you can sync up with the movement. So this video right now, I recorded on my phone, but I'm gonna show you how I'm deleting the audio from the phone and gonna add in a separate recorded audio track on top of that. Um, I didn't record this in a way that meant for better audio. So when it's all said and done, it may sound great, it may not, but I just wanna show you how to put that together. So once you've filmed your concert and audio recorded your concert separately, if that's how you choose to do it, because you had better microphones, but you realize your iPhone camera or whatever device has a great camera on it, so it looks great, how you're gonna put those two together afterwards. Hello. Um, we are on my computer. I've turned on Final Cut Pro right here. And then some of you uh, may have a Mac. Your best bet is to download iMovie. It's a free program. If you're on a PC, there are tons and tons of options. Um, Windows Movie Maker is sort of the classic version of what we're about to do. And they all do things slightly differently, but the concepts are still the same. First, what you want to do is import your media. So I did that um, right up here. We've got the, let me turn my speakers off. We've got the video that I recorded on my iPhone and I dumped that in here. And really I can just open up a, a file folder and then I can drag and drop it in to my window. So every program does that a little bit differently, but I've already imported that. So let me drop that on here. And the next thing I need to do is add my audio, which I've already dropped in to my list. I just recorded that. Let's say we recorded it with a, a wonderful microphone at a concert. So we're, we're imagining this is a maybe an hour, hour long concert video and the same length, give or take with the audio. I'm going to drag this audio file down here. So we're imagining I recorded this with some microphones in a concert hall or through a soundboard or what, whatever works for you. Maybe those Zoom recorders um, and then you're on an SD card and I dumped that on there. So this is an MP3 file. Maybe you're using a WAV file, whatever works for you. Now, I've got to line this audio up with this video and this is why we used this clapboard before. So I'm going to zoom in just a bit. And you can see this spike in the audio file should correlate with this spike in the video. And, and I can visualize that because of the clapping. So I'm going to scoot this over. And every single program has a different way of trimming. and So you can see I've got, I must have hit record on the audio before I hit record on the video, which is why this clap spike in this in this audio um, happens later because I started it sooner. So um, every program has a way of cutting and pasting. You can sometimes just select that and trim it um, up in the settings. I can trim it or I can cut it and delete hunks or a lot of programs I can just, if it's highlighted, I can grab the end of it and tell it to start later. Now I have space to move this back and I'm gonna try to line those two up as close as I can. Okay, now let me zoom in even more and we'll see how close I got. You see, I got pretty close. There's the spike in the audio. Here's the spike that correlates to the video. So the tighter you zoom in, the easier you can see where those waves are. And what I'm trying to do is to line those up. So let me zoom back out. And we'll start right over here. Let me turn my speakers on. Hopefully you hear that okay. And here we go. All right, so if you think back to older movies you've seen, so if you, you're thinking, I only hear one audio track, that's a good thing. That means I put that in the right spot. What would happen if I had it a little earlier and not lined up? You're going to hear it twice. All right, so, all right, so if you think back to... 
So we don't want that. Let me undo that, put it back. I think they were lined up pretty well. Now, if I highlight this, most audio programs have a second window, a secondary window where you can adjust audio. So if I click on this speaker here in iMovie, it's very similar. And here's my volume. I can pull it all the way down. You can also go over here. And if I get right on this little line that goes across um, the video, it is the audio track. And right now it's at zero decibels. And that doesn't mean zero decibels of sound are coming out. That means there's zero change in the decibels that it was recorded with. So right now there's no change. If I add decibels, I make it louder. If I take away decibels, I make it softer. And I'm just going to pull it all the way down until it disappears. And what you may have noticed up here in the corner, this thing just moved along with it. So there are a couple ways of, of getting rid of the audio. Some programs you can just click a clip and then click mute and then it's gone. So I got rid of the audio through the camera. And now all I have is what, what I hope is your really clean, good audio that you recorded with microphones. And now it's in sync with the video. So if I click play, all right. So if you think back to older, now I'm in sync with this. Now I can still take this and I can add volume. I can take away volume, whatever makes sense for the video. But now I've got great audio, great video, and then you're going to share that, whatever makes sense for your program sometime. So if I click File on this particular thing, I'm going to click Share. It gives me some options, or I can do specific ones. Or um, some programs will say Export, um, and then you're going to save it maybe as an MP4 or a .mov, um, whatever makes sense for you. Uh, if you're uploading to YouTube, YouTube doesn't care that much. It takes lots of different files. So just imagine you could get a good video very cheaply, just somebody's camera. Cameras are really good at capturing video. And then fairly cheaply, you can record through a soundboard, through some mics in the room, through a Zoom recorder, and you can put those two together very quickly in, uh, after the show in editing on your computer and then push those out. Now, of course, every one of these programs comes with extra little doodads. You can add pictures and tiles. And um, so if I click over here, um, I can add, I can generate some backgrounds. So if I want, if I want to start with, uh, let's say this curtain and I go all the way to the beginning and I put this curtain here. Now I've got this great curtain that's going to float around until my video kicks in, and I could use that to put all the information about the concert. Maybe I'm going to put the title, the name of the group, the date, that kind of thing. And then when this is done, it'll pop right into the video of your concert. Um, and then that's, that's where this stuff comes in great with titles. So I could just drag and drop titles. And all, the pro all these programs do this sort of thing in different ways. And if I, I can go in and just change the name of that to be whatever I want it to do for my concert. So in this case, that's just the name of the type of title. And I can go in and type over that and call it whatever I want. And if I want less, just like with the clip, I'm just going to drag it and shorten it. If I want this to come in sooner, I'm just going to move it. And I'm going to create all that. Now, a lot of this editing stuff you're going to find in my tutorials on my website. Um, I will put up in, uh, on the screen right now, you'll get a QR, so if you want to pause it, you can scan it and get to my YouTube website, or you can hit uh, www.ashlandbands.org, and you can find the link to my YouTube channel right there on my page. Either way works. Um, and you'll find ways of creating with Windows Movie Maker and iMovie, um, and if you've got some other program you like, you're going to find a lot of similarities in there. All right, let's talk about how you're going to upload or live stream. So if you get on your YouTube page, um, and if you don't have a YouTube page, but you have a Gmail account, guess what? You have a YouTube page. You just didn't know it. You can see they've decided all these great things. They've decided I want to watch some music videos, some um, repairing videos. Uh, let's see, I've even got some SNL videos. Um, but up here, once you're logged in, and if you're logged in to your Google, uh, sweet. You're going to find, if I click, in fact, let me click out of here for one moment into my email. And right here, look at all these options. One of them is YouTube. So if you click on there and you've never logged in before, that's probably the best way to get started. 
and then it may ask you some login questions to start. But you've got this channel already available. I'm going to click here on this. It looks like a little camera with a plus sign. It's going to give me two options, upload video or go live. So if I've edited my video and I've saved it and I know where it is on my desktop because maybe last night was a great concert and I recorded the video on my phone in the back of the house and I put up two microphones or a Zoom recorder and recorded the audio and then put them together on my computer, maybe in iMovie, maybe in Windows Movie Maker, or maybe I, I bought another platform that, that works great for me. I'm going to click Upload. When I click that, it's going to send me to a page and it's going to just ask me to drag and drop my video. So when I do that, I have to select my file and I can literally come over here and find my file. Let me click desktop. I'm just going to drag the video I just made about um, putting audio and video together. I'm going to drag that on there. It's going to recognize it as a video file. Then it's going to want to know what to title it. And I'm just going to say clinic test video. You can add a description. This is where you could um, put the concert program, you know, the list of songs or what groups they were performing, that kind of thing. Thumbnail is nice. This is the picture you're going to see that you see on uh, YouTube before you click on a video. There's always a still there. So it's going to randomly pick one. You won't, you won't know what these are until it's actually uploaded. It's uploading right now. Um, but then it'll take some random screenshots. So you can select those later on. Otherwise, it will generate one on its own. But you can upload a thumbnail. So if you had a picture of the concert program or something, save it as a PDF or it's probably a picture file, I should say. Save it as like a PNG or JPEG. Then upload that. That will be what you see on the screen before you click the thing. So some people like to adjust that. You can decide what's going on for here. I always click Made for Kids because that's the kind of stuff I'm doing. If I click Next, all these extra things you can add, but you can add these later. So if you want to add subtitles, if you want to add an end screen or things to click on because you want to send people somewhere else, you can add those. Some people like to have that at the end. Like, for more information about my music program, click this link and it sends you to a website or something. Now, copyright. This is an important thing to mention. I'm not a copyright lawyer. But I do feel it's important that we follow copyright. And YouTube will flag your stuff if it notices things are copyrighted. I would say probably 99% of every concert video you post online is going to be copyrighted. Uh, and if you want to go through all the steps of doing that, making sure it's all uh, protected, and you've, you've reached out to ASCAP and, and the different places, good for you. Um, I recommend you do that. I know most of us aren't doing it because we're just posting these for kids and for parents. So um, I can't tell you that where the legalities start and end, um, but I'll show you that it is real. They do check them. Um, I'll show you that in a second. So let me click next. All right. Private. That's that. I would almost never use that. Unlisted. That means you're going to have to send this link right here to everybody that wants to see it. Public means it's just going to show up on your page. I'm going to click unlisted right now because I don't mean to upload this particular video. I'm just showing you in this clinic and I don't need whoever subscribed to my page wondering why I just posted that. But if you copy this link and you can click that right there and copy the link, then you can send that to anybody you want and they can watch a video, but then it's not public. Schedule, if you're like, I want to upload this now, but I don't want anybody watching it till 5 p.m., you can click that and schedule a premiere. And schedule the time and then on your website it'll say uh, premiere at a certain time and you can draw up excitement for that if you'd like all that's not clicking save it's uploading right now and then we're going to fast forward to when that is done okay so you can see uploading is almost finished it says 19 seconds left once that's done, and you can actually click close well before that, it'll keep uploading as long as you don't shut down your computer. Um, once that's done, it's going to take a few minutes to process, and however long that takes is really based upon the size and length of your video. This, The one I just uploaded wasn't too long, um, but now it says the upload is complete. Processing will begin shortly. Perfect. So I'm going to click close. Now, if I click on my videos, you can see I've got plenty here. Now take a look. This one is processing. That's my test video. Visibility is pending because it's not ready yet. I've got one marked as unlisted. 
I've got one marked as public, another one unlisted, another one public, so on and so on and so on. Restrictions made for kids. Now take a look down here. Copyright claim. Here's another one. Copyright claim. That was a concert. Um, I got a couple marching band videos in here. This one says copyright claim. Now that's not necessarily something to get upset about, but it is a real thing. People uh, on YouTube or, or their algorithm does listen for things and says, I think I just heard something copyrighted. So no, that's aware. Um, and from what I've read and learned, typically that means that um, they could tell you to take a video down. And so you'll take it down most likely, right? You won't just hang on to something because uh, you don't want to fight with YouTube. I'm sure you don't. So let's go back to my main page. And you'll see if you come here on your own later, I got videos and playlists. If you go playlists, I've got all this stuff. So tech tutorials, if I view that playlist, that's where you're going to see audio editing, video editing, some ideas to help you do that sort of stuff. That's where you'll find a recording of this clinic, um, but other things if you want to help with editing that. But what we're going to do is we're going to click up here and create again. And this is this time we're going to say go live. So I'm going to click that. It's going to take me to a different page. Now, here's what we want to do. Are you going to go live right now or are you going to go live eventually? So I'm going to click. It's going to be eventually. We're going later. Built-in webcam or streaming software. So there's a lot of options. When it says built-in webcam, it's literally the thing I'm looking at right now on my computer. But we talked earlier about that ATEM switcher. That's probably the way to go live. You'll, you'll plug that in and that will think it's a webcam. And when you do that, we're going to allow, we're going to say, okay, yes, we would like to access cameras. And now you can see in the background, my camera, and I have to put in the title of the event and description of the event. And this looks a lot similar to uploading a video, except we're going live. And when you're done, once you're done filling all that out, you are literally live streaming to uh, YouTube right then. You can adjust the speed. Uh, so if, if you want a little buffer, you know how sometimes live videos, um, what you're seeing actually happened maybe 10, 20 seconds ago. You can set that up through Google as well. And then over here, you can manage your different live streams. So I can set up, if I know I've got a slew of concerts coming around Christmas time, I can set up all those and have those ready. And then I can send those links out because once I set up on my stream, if I'm going to schedule something, it looks the same. But once I get to the next page, customization and visibility, that's where I'm going to decide who can see it and when they can see it. But I can send out those links ahead of time. Hey, here's my live stream for this concert or that, that event. And then they can have them ahead of time because I scheduled them. If I just go live right at that moment, then somebody's got to be on my page and know what's happening. Now, the reason I'm going to tell you this part's tricky is because you are going to be stuck with whatever audio and video you send out. If you have a way of plugging into your camera, like I showed you with that Canon, not the cheapest camera on the planet. There are, there are affordable ones. You just want to make sure your audio is great. Because if you're like me, the video is only secondary to the audio. I want great video uh, and great audio, but if I had to pick one, audio is the one I want. So what I'm suggesting is maybe you tell people live stream is great. Here's a way to do it. You can watch this video. Uh, I can show you how to do it. You want to shoot me an email later on. I'll show you how to do it. But maybe you want to tell parents, hey, the concert's live Thursday night at seven. And if you want to watch the concert um, on your own at your house, I'll have it ready by Friday night at seven. So, uh, I just like the control over making sure it's the best audio and video put out there that I can do. And when you live stream, sometimes you suffer a little audio. I would suggest you go back on my YouTube channel and just click on some of the live videos. The older they are, as in just over a year ago, when we were trying to figure out what we're doing, I believe October of 2020, it's probably one of the first ones, um, I, I will definitely tell you, I was not happy with the audio. And as we move along, sometimes the audio gets better and better and better and 
better. And sometimes we have another hiccup because of the way the live stream's working. Um, so it's a great option for times or situations where parents, grandparents, people out of town can't visit. But if it's not essential for them to watch it while it's happening, I would consider recording it on something simple like a cell phone and getting some great audio and then putting it together. It'll take you maybe 20 minutes to put it together and then process that video, put it up on YouTube. Um, so there's my advice on that. Well, that's it for this audio and video recording workshop. I hope you learned a little bit about how you can take some great audio and patch it together with some great video uh, without breaking the bank. Give you some ideas on how to put that together, um, whether you want to do that afterwards or do it live straight into a camera and go straight up to uh, YouTube and post it as a live stream. Lots of different options out there. I recommend you hit my website. I'll have the QR right about there, and that'll give you uh, access to all the videos that I've got posted to show you how to do some extra things, um, and you can listen to some of uh, the live streams that we did here in Ashland. Um, the older you get, the worse they sound, um, and we've been tweaking it over time because audio is really the thing we're, we're looking for. Video is only secondary for us. So feel free to email me if you have any more questions. Um, I look forward to it, and thanks again for listening.